Have any of you tried the new Bud Light seltzers? And are they worth it? Hey there, NJRoot22.com here with another little uh, alcohol booze vlog. We've been talking about seltzers a lot over the past uh, year or so. And this has been on the market for a little while, uh, but it was new to us. So we found these Bud Light seltzers and they passed the initial sniff test because they had uh, the little box here says uh, less than one gram of sugar and two overall grams of carbs per can. And we were initially okay with it. Uh, we cracked it open, um, you know, it was 5% alcohol, so it was a little bit higher on, on that than our favorite, the Smirnoff Spiked Sparkling Seltzers. Uh, and I like the flavor of these uh, pretty, pretty much. Um, you know, the black cherry was good. Uh, the mango was the best. Black cherry and straw, and black cherry was second, strawberry was third, and the lemon lime alone didn't really taste all that good to us. It tasted a little, you know, quite artificial. It didn't taste like any kind of lemon lime. Uh, it didn't taste real, but mixed down, it wasn't bad. So we were about to say, hey, you know, there's a little tie here between Bud Light and Smirnoff. But then I bought a second 12 pack. And by the way, they're $14.99 or $14.49 at Wegman. So they're about the same price as the Smirnoff. Um, so we bought a second pack thinking this is going to be in our rotation. And the second 12 pack we bought, it, uh, we found ourselves drinking more. Um, I, I, I think I drank 50% more in one night than I normally do. And that got me thinking, and I felt like crap the next day because I, I drank more than I should have. Um, I'm wondering because one of the ingredients on here, if I can read it to you, it says, uh, let's just read the mango one. Water, cold fermented cane sugar, that's how they get their alcohol. Natural flavors, cane sugar, citric acid, sodium citrate, and malted rice. So they actually add a little bit of sugar, maybe a little less than a gram, but I'm wondering if, if that one gram of sh just refined cane sugar is enough to make them addictive to the point where you're drinking more than you should, like uh, just subconsciously or just something's happening that I think I really did suck them down, so to say, quicker. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, Bud Light was, a, is, was very late to the seltzer market, um, at least under their own brand name. God knows how many affiliates and other sub businesses they own. But I'm wondering what they did because they have a ton of money and they have scientists out the wazoo. I mean, they have a, like a whole chemical lab going on in multiple locations across the world uh, formulating new things. And I'm just wondering what they did. Maybe they added something that they knew was going to be appealing and addictive so that their uh, products could sell well. I'm sure that sounds like a little bit of a conspiracy theory, but it's it can be proven. It's happened uh, a lot in history where things, know, things knowingly addictive, Coke, <laughs> um, were sold to the public to, for profit of others. But, you know, maybe I'll try one more 12 pack, but I didn't like what happened um, with that excess drinking. And I think I'd, I'd rather stick with something that's proven to me, me, my own little experiment to work without a problem. And that's the Smirnoff spiked sparkling seltzer. But maybe we should just stop drinking altogether. And that's a, a topic for a future conversation. If you liked the video, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.